When you're growing a lot of plants, especially when you're germinating seeds in a suburban garden, it's a little bit different because we don't really have a whole bunch of space. Well, every year I grow hundreds of seeds and I always end up finding some place to put them. Now, I don't have a greenhouse and I don't have any grow lights, but I always end up with more plants than I could possibly use. So I'd like to go through and show you the different applications that I have. I use different pots to put them in. I use a different type of a soil that I think is much more economical. And I would like to show you how to make your patio table into a greenhouse. This is such a cool little thing to do. I'm also going to give you a website that you guys can write down that will help you understand when is the right time to plant seeds. Hi you guys, I'm Sonia with Suburban Gardening and when to plant seeds is like one of the most difficult things. Seeds are planted in all different times of the year. Some like it cold, some like it hot. You know, you just don't know. I would like you guys to check out a website called frostdate.com. Now I'll put that up on the screen so you can write it down. I am not affiliated with them in any way and I did recommend this to you in Planting Seeds Part 1. This way, you don't have to have a knowledge about every single seed. If one year you just decide, hey, I think I'm going to grow butternut squash, but I really don't know when to put it in the ground, check out frostate.com. It'll tell you when. One of the most important things that us gardeners need to talk about is the weather and the ground temperature. The ground temperature is key. If you're going to be direct sowing in the ground, you need to know what the ground temperature is. When I pull my seeds out and we get started on that, I'm going to show you I have a little thermometer. I put it in the ground and it tells me the ground temperature. I did it today and our ground temperature is 60 degrees Fahrenheit, even though the weather um, at nighttime is below 60 degrees. So the ground will hold on to the heat sometimes. So it's great to have this little thermometer. I don't have a lot of garden gadgets, but I think that is one I really like. I'm also going to be using different potting soil. Now this is just regular old potting soil. And what I do is I add perlite to it. The perlite lightens up the soil. It helps aerate the soil and gets the little seedlings down. So I'll give you a demonstration of that in just a minute. We're going to be using these. These are much larger cells than I did before. Um, there's only 18 in one of these flats and it does come with its own little moat there so the water won't drain out. So I can put bigger seeds in these. I'm going to be adding a small amount of fertilizer to my potting soil, not a lot, but I know me and sometimes I leave them in their trays too long and then they don't have anything to, for nutrition. So putting a little bit of fertilizer in there just to get them started, they don't need it, they won't use it. Another thing that I use is I bought these very large potting containers and they're sort of meant for trees. But when you pot sunflowers or something that's going to be five feet tall, they like to send tap roots very deep. And in these little containers, that's just not conducive for what they want. So I'm not planting them out in the ground today. I'm going to put them in these big containers just with some potting soil and some fertilizer. And that way they'll have plenty of room to send those tap roots down. And if I don't get them in the ground right away, that's okay. I'm also going to, in about two weeks, direct sow some sunflower seeds out there as well. So I'm gonna have them in two different places. One thing that I use that I'm, I think a lot of people do it, maybe, I'm not really sure, but I use solo cups. And what I do is I take my garden clippers and I poke holes in the bottom and they make great little um, pots for putting your seeds in. The other thing I use these for, and we'll get to this in part three, is when you're transplanting your seedlings out of these little cells, it's great to put them in here. I don't have a lot of three inch cans is what you get at the nursery. And if you buy them, they're kind of expensive. So I just go ahead and use these solo cuts. This is the arsenal of seeds I have right now. Now, these are the ones that I'm actually growing at this time of year. I have a couple more seeds that I've put away because I'm not messing with them at the moment, but I do like to keep them organized. I wrote on here what the temperature of the seeds are. So I have them in their own little cell pack. I think this one says cold, this one says cool, and this one says warm. So that way I know which ones need to go in the ground at what time. I've already separated them out. 
So real quickly, let's just go over what we're going to be planting today. I've got quite a few sunflowers, quite a few sunflowers, whoop, more sunflowers. We're going to be putting in some zucchini. I'm, I only have two artichoke seeds left, so I'm just going to go ahead and plant them. I have some marigold seeds that I harvested some marigold that I had last spring. I have these wonderful squash. These are going to be too fun. Oh my goodness. So more squash, more squash, more squash. So all these pumpkins are just something that I really love to use, you know, in the fall. Spaghetti squash is something that we really like to eat. And I harvested those from spaghetti squash that we had. This is butternut squash and this is honey nut squash. So those were also harvested from plants that we had last year. The other thing I just wanted to mention was about the tomatoes. I'm not gonna be setting out any tomatoes today because tomatoes are a whole different animal all of themselves. I am going to be doing a complete video on tomatoes and show you so many different ways that you can grow them and that you can propagate them. They're super great to grow. And then the last thing is I'm going to be direct sowing a few things. It's going to be spinach, lettuce, and then I'm going to set out some cucumbers. Like I said, our ground is about 60 degrees, so I think the cucumbers can handle it. What I have right here are these black containers. Now, I showed them to you earlier, and I have them in like a little tray that was just being discarded. But what happens with these is when I get them all filled up and I go to pick them up, they all just flop over. So what I've done is I've taken a paper clip and I paper clipped each one of these cells together. That way they're one unit. And when I pick them up, they don't flop all over the place. So right now, real quickly, we are going to put sunflowers in here. I want to put in the big guys. This one right here, he gets to be, it says the height of this is seven to 12 feet tall. Imagine, that's a dwarf one. We'll put it in something completely different. And this one gets to be five to eight. So I went ahead and I wrote all my tags out. I always keep my markers and my tags here with my seeds. Now I recommend only using a marker that's made for writing on tags that's uh, waterproof and fade proof. Because if you use a Sharpie, they don't last very long and then you don't know what plant is in your containers. So as we go through the video, if you see anything you're interested in, except for seeds, I'll put the links below this video and you guys can check that out for yourself. Beautiful sunflowers. I'm going to do three pots And you know how to do sunflowers. They are super easy. We had sunflowers out on the hill last year and the little yellow finches just went wild over them. Now I'm only going to put two per cell and I'm going to spread them out because these guys are going to get really big. Tell you what, let's do three per cell just in case somebody doesn't make it and I'm pushing them down into the soil. Big seeds are so easy to handle. You just push them down in there. Now I'm gonna do the big mammoth. I already wrote out my tags. I'm only gonna put in two per cell here and I'm gonna push them about a half an inch down. Done. So simple. Tags. The reason that I'm only doing three is because I'm going to direct sow a lot of these in about two weeks when the weather's just a little bit better. The next thing that I'm going to work on is the squash. I love honey nut squash and butternut squash, and I have a recipe how you stuff them with sausage and all this good stuff. My husband loves it. 
So I've made three, four tags, but we're just going to do three. Remember, I have a suburban garden. I don't have a lot of space. Some of this will end up over at my mom's house. So again, I'm just going to put, two. let's do three just in case one doesn't make it. I harvested these from um, a honey nut squash that we had last year. And if you do that, I highly recommend it, but make sure you get them when they're organic. If they're not organic, you're not quite sure what you're going to end up with and it may grow this beautiful vine and not get any fruit on it. So we want to be really careful of that. Now the next one I'm going to do is a regular butternut squash. This one I also harvested um, from the neighbor. They grew some beautiful butternut squash, so I couldn't wait to try some. And I'm also going to direct sow these in the soil in about two weeks. So this really is all there is to it when you're talking about large seeds. They are simple. Get them down in there because they need a lot of room. Beautiful. Now once I'm done planting all of these seeds, I will go ahead and water them in really well. I'm starting with soil that's a little damp so it will um, absorb the water really well and then that way they'll be ready to germinate. Now I'm going to put this in my makeshift greenhouse that I made with my patio table. So once we've planted all of our seeds, I can't wait to show you this little invention I made. I wanted to show you how I mix the soil. Now this is just regular potting soil and we use potting soil because it's a little more sterile than just using, you know, regular garden soil and it's not quite as nutrient so it doesn't burn the little leaves. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour quite a bit of perlite in here. And I'm going to mix it all around. I have a cloud of perlite. The other thing I'm going to put in here is a little bit of plantone. Plantone is good across the board, and I'm not going to feed as nearly as much as I normally would, but I want to put some in here because sometimes I leave these in the cells too long and they need some nutrition. Now, after a couple of weeks after they've sprouted, I'll go ahead and start feeding them with water-soluble fertilizer that is half strength, and that way that'll give them enough to keep on going till I get them in the ground. I'm going to mix this together really well, and then we're going to get them in the cells so we can pot some up. I have three of this size cells. They hold 18, and I put usually four seeds in here. And the reason I do that is because I am going to let them germinate in here, and then once they've gotten some true leaves on them and I can handle them, I'll put them into a bigger container like maybe into the solo cups, and then they'll have their own home. But for right now, this is going to be a little condominium for those seeds, and they're going to have to share. All of the cells are filled with soil. I kind of overfill mine a little bit, but I like it that way. They have plenty of soil in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pop these seeds down in here. This is a little bit different, like I said earlier, because they're going to have to be sharing. So this is the spaghetti squash, and I made three tags, four tags, but I'm going to use three. The reason why is because I'm going to be putting four of these seeds in each one. So I'm going to end up with 12 plants. That's quite a lot for a suburban garden. I'm going to do that with each one of these cells. And that way I'll be absolutely sure to get some spaghetti squash. You know, one thing about planting large seeds is that kids can handle these really well. And they're so reliable. You could actually just take a solo cup, put some dirt in it, and some big seeds like this. Sunflower seeds are great for this. 
And the next thing you know, you've got little plants coming up and the kids absolutely love it. So it's a wonderful way to teach them about growing things. Now I push them down into the soil about a half of an inch and I'm going to do that with the rest. Boy, do I have a lot of these seeds. We're going to be doing the pumpkins now. We're going to be doing the gray pumpkins, the white pumpkins, the orange pumpkins, and the mini pumpkins. Oh my goodness, this is so wonderful. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've got hummingbirds just flying all around me. Today I saw a bumblebee. Oh, the first bumblebee of the season. He was huge. And some little um, honeybees have been flying around as well. Okay, so this is an interesting pack. I only have three seeds. The reason why is because this is from last year and I remember now. So I'm just going to go ahead and plant all three into the same spot. Now, I have these pumpkins. I still have one in my house in, all the way in March because they are so gorgeous, these pumpkins. Oh my goodness, everybody loves some. And I did want to mention, I hold on to my seed packs. I will not throw this away. I'll throw it away after everything's up and I put it in the ground and everything's going fine. But if I need information, I usually go back and look at my empty seed packs. That worked out just perfect because I only made two tags for the mini pumpkins. Mini pumpkins, the vine of a mini pumpkin actually makes quite a few. I'm going to put about five seeds down in here because I will be able to separate them and propagate them. Now, I'm going to be doing that in part three, so you need to come back. The most exciting part about planting seeds and watching them germinate is now having all these plants that you can put in your garden or you can decorate with or you can give away to people. It's wonderful. So I'll end up probably with about 10 of these. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plant these all up. And then we'll move on to something really fun. I did want to make one mention about the size of the plants that I'm doing right now. The larger the seed, generally, the larger the plant. The plants that I just put in here, I'm going to be putting the pumpkins and the spaghetti squash and so on. Those are vine crops and they get quite large. They can grow 15, 20 feet long vines. So be sure when you do something like this that you have a place to let them meander about. Now, zucchini is a super popular plant, and I know why, because it's easy to grow, it's easy to harvest, and it's totally fun. I mean, I love growing zucchini, and I really don't even eat it that much, but my daughter loves it, and all my friends love it. So I harvest the zucchini, and I give it away to people a lot of times. But this plant is going to get huge. It will need about a four by four foot space. If you're lucky, only a three by three foot space. So think about size when you're thinking about planting your seeds. It really makes a big difference. Now you can definitely grow zucchini in pots. You can grow anything in a pot. And a pot, because it's small and the roots don't get as big, it will keep the plant a little smaller as well. And I'll tell you, there is nothing more fun than having a pumpkin growing along your patio out of a pot. It's super cool. <laughs> and it looks so much fun in the summertime. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your um, planting. I have a raised bed. We're going to go out there in a minute and I'm going to do some direct sowing. I can't put zucchini in there because it takes up half of the raised bed. I have to put it in places where there's more open land. Now I have a hill behind my house and it's what I call the wild kingdom. And the reason I am not direct sowing the squashes and the pumpkins and the sunflower seeds is because I'm dealing with gopher squirrels and the cutest bunny rabbits you've ever seen. But they love tender, tender little plants. So I have to plant them in my yard where it's safe in these um, little cells and wait till they get big enough to where they're not as tasty to those critters anymore. I have a couple of our seed trays done and I'm really excited to take you over and show you that little greenhouse that I made. Remember that it's temporary. We're not sitting outside very much right now. Actually not at all because it's too cold and this is going to work out perfect because I can dismantle this 
in about a month when we're going to set up the garden with the rugs and the chairs and the outdoor living. So let's go over and water these and let me show you that little greenhouse I made. Here is the big idea that I wanted to share with you and I'm so excited about it. So basically this is my patio table and it's, a, it's six people and it has holes on the top, which is half sun, half shade, right? And what I did was I took a large piece of plastic and I secured it to each one of the legs. And now I have a makeshift greenhouse. So let me show you how I got these legs taped down there like that. I did not tape it to the legs of my patio table because I don't want to mess it up. And the pillows are on top of there right now because when I was putting the plastic on, it was trying to fly away. So the pillows really helped. So pretty much all I did here was I gathered this plastic together as tight as I could. I wrapped it around and then I put a piece of clear tape. Now I know that that plastic won't come away from this clear tape, it'll hold on to it. And the other thing I wanted you to see is I didn't put the plastic all the way to the ground. You know when you get in a car on a cold day, but the sun's been out, it's pretty warm inside that car. So I don't want it to get that hot in here where it's 80 or 90 degrees. I just want it to stay 75, that'd be perfect. Just enough to keep these seeds so they're happy and they germinate quicker. Let me grab those seed trays and we'll put them inside. We're out here at my raised bed and I absolutely love this thing. My husband built it for me and I have so much fun planting in here. But this year I was infested with grubs and grubs are a terrible nuisance. They come up out of the ground and they eat your plants right from the bottom where, they, where they're at the soil. And you can tell if you have grubs because they make little holes in the soil. And if you're finding you have little holes down in there, go dig around in there. You might find yourself a grub. Well, I went ahead and I put nematoids in here and that's supposed to kill the larva of the grubs and I've dug out 50 or more. So if I see any more, I'll just keep digging them out, but I'm ready to go ahead and try. We're going to be putting in some spinach, some lettuce and some cucumbers. Now this soil has already been amended, but I am going to be adding some biotone because the biotone really helps those roots get down in there and get nice and strong. So that will be the only fertilizing I do right now, but later on in a couple of weeks, I'll be putting some garden tone down in here just so it'll have it as it waters down over the season. I just saw a little bumblebee come by. Come on in closer so I can show you how I get them in the raised bed here. It might be a little bit hard for you guys to see, but right here there's a hole and a hole and another hole. So I'm going to dig down in there and see if I could find you guys. Oh yeah, there's one right here. So this is what I'm talking about. These are the grubs. <laughs> Ooh, but look at that big worm. That's awesome. Look at him back down in there. I brought my little ground thermometer over here so you guys could see. I just stuck it in the ground about 10 minutes ago and it says that the ground is about 65, 68 degrees. That's absolutely perfect for putting any kind of vegetables in. So basically all I'm going to do is I'm just going to dig some very small um, rows and drop the seeds in. As you can see, I have put a lot of garlic in. And the reason I did that was because the grubs don't like the garlic. So I'm pretty limited this year on how much I can plant. But we're going to put in cucumbers and on the other side I'm going to put in pickles. I just don't have the seeds yet. Cucumbers here and we'll put the lettuce and the spinach right here. I know you guys can see these marigolds as well. Marigolds are great for keeping 
pesty bugs out of your garden. So I am left them in the pots until I finish putting my rows in, and then I'll go ahead and decide where they need to go. I think they call that a good companion plant. Spinach seeds are really kind of a nice size. They're easy to work with and they drop. Hmm. But I'm just going to sprinkle them down in here and then I'm going to thin them out later. The nice thing about these seed packets is they give you plenty of seeds. I should get quite a few spinach plants from here. It'll just be really fun to watch them grow. I didn't cover them very much because they're tiny little seeds, but I am going to press them into the soil. I'm going to be growing cucumbers on these tomato cages. They absolutely work great for anything that you want to climb up. Cucumber seeds are much easier to handle, and I don't need that many plants, so I'm just going to plant four on each cage here. Push it down about a half of an inch. This soil is just beautiful to work in. I've got all my seeds in and I have really great irrigation in this bed. I love the way that it works. So I need to get my irrigation back. I will come back here later and I'll test out the irrigation just to make sure everything's getting full coverage. It looks like they are working great. We have been doing today what I consider one of the most fun things you can do in the garden, and that is make new plants. I absolutely love it. I always end up with so many plants that I just don't know what to do with them all, but I always have friends and family who are happy to take my nice, healthy plants. This is artichoke plants that I grew from a seed. They're at two different stages. I'm having a whole artichoke garden out on my hill. It's doing wonderfully. I have two-year-old plants out there and they're doing great. And the squirrels and the gophers and the bunnies don't eat them once they get a little bit bigger. When you do your gardening, especially when you do your seeds, weather matters. Check the um, temperature of your soil. Keep an eye on the temperature. Um, of the air. You know, just watch what your temperature is going to be. Having that little greenhouse that I made out of my patio table is going to work out great because right now it's about 66 degrees. Perfect weather for germinating seeds. But in the next couple of days, it's going to dip down into the 40s and the um, um, mid 50s. That's not perfect weather for germinating seeds. So being able to tuck them away in that little greenhouse just for a couple of days is wonderful. And I'm just going to leave them in there and just see how they do. But I will be checking the temperature in there. And because I live in a mild climate, I left it so there's at least a couple of inches all the way around the bottom. So they will get some airflow. I don't want to bake my seeds. I just want to keep them warm so that they can germinate and be in a nice little happy nursery for them. I know that a lot of people that come to my channel live in different zones. And for instance, my daughter-in-law, she lives in right near Boise, Idaho, and she's a zone seven. So she's going to need to wait a couple of weeks before she starts this whole program. Now she can start her seeds inside, but she doesn't have any kind of a setup inside. So she's going to wait about two weeks and then she's going to make herself a little greenhouse and she's going to be putting her plants in cells like I showed you in um, seed planting part one. And then she's going to be bringing them into the house 
at nighttime when it's a little colder, and then she'll take them out again in the daytime when they can get some good sunshine. I tell you, that's a program that has worked for me for 20 years. It really is a great program. I highly recommend it if you don't want to go out and buy a bunch of equipment. I don't know what I would do with it most of the year anyways. Well, you guys, we have talked about so much good stuff, and I encourage you to figure out what your ground temperature is. I bet you have something in your kitchen that you could take out there, just a meat thermometer maybe, I don't know. If not, I'll put this um, in the links below and you guys can get one for your garden. But it's really good to know what your temperature is. Also, you've seen them put down black paper, especially like when they do the strawberry fields. That's because it keeps the weeds down, but it also keeps the soil warm. So keep in mind that I'm going to have a video coming up strictly on how to grow tomatoes. There's so much controversy about tomatoes. I think it's great. So I'll just show you what I do and what I've learned from some very good tomato growers. So there's so much to talk about in the garden. And I'm so glad you guys stopped by for this. I'll see you guys next time.